In this section of DC circuits, we will learn about series and parallel circuits, voltage and current divider rules, ideal voltage source, ideal current source and source transformation. The load is a device across which an output is measured. When the DC voltage source is connected to a load and the current gets a closed path to flow, the structure is called as a DC circuit. There are two structures of DC circuit as series and parallel. In a series circuit, all the components are connected back to back and only one path is available for the current flow. Here, we have three resistances connected in series with the voltage source V. When the current flows, every resistance consumes some amount of the voltage applied. This is known as a voltage drop. Thus, for all the three resistances, the voltage drops are calculated using Ohm's law as V1 equals I into R1, V2 equals I into R2 and V3 equals I into R3. For any series circuit, the applied voltage is always equal to the sum of individual voltage drops. Thus, V equals V1 plus V2 plus V3. Substituting the values of V1, V2 and V3 using Ohm's law, we get V equals I into R1 plus R2 plus R3 or V upon I equals R1 plus R2 plus R3 but V upon I equals R the total resistance. Thus the three resistances connected in series can be replaced by the series equivalent resistance as shown. Hey, it's time to concentrate now. For any series circuit, the current flowing through each resistance is same. Applied voltage equals sum of all the voltage drops. Every resistor of the circuit has its own voltage drop. So, in series connection, as soon as the voltage is applied to the circuit, bulbs start to glow one by one. Any one bulb goes off, then the entire circuit breaks and the current does not flow. The circuit in which all the components are connected across two common points only is called as the parallel circuit. Here, all the three bulbs are connected across the two points A and B forming the parallel structure. Thus, in the parallel circuit, current has multiple parallel paths to flow with the total current supplied by the source getting divided into parallel branches. But the total current always equals sum of individual currents in every branch. Thus, I equals I1 plus I2 plus I3. And now, by applying Ohm's law to every branch current, we get I1 equals V upon R1, I2 equals V upon R2, and I3 equals V upon R3. Therefore, I equals V upon R1 plus V upon R2 plus V upon R3. Thus, we can replace the three parallel resistances by the equivalent resistance Rp as 1 upon Rp equals 1 upon R1 plus 1 upon R2 plus 1 upon R3. The characteristics of parallel circuit are the voltage drop across each resistance is same. The total current is equal to the sum of the branch currents. Every resistor has its own current. Thus, even if any of the bulb goes off, only that branch becomes inactive, but the remaining branches conduct the current. In series circuits, voltage drop is observed across every single resistance. When the circuits are complex, we use voltage divider rule to find the voltage drop across a particular resistance. It says that voltage drop across the particular resistor is equal to ratio of that resistance to the total resistance multiplied by the applied voltage. According to voltage divider rule, the voltage across the resistance R1 is equal to same resistance upon total resistance into applied voltage equal to R1 upon R1 plus R2 plus R3 
into applied voltage V. Similarly, voltage across R2 equals R2 upon R1 plus R2 plus R3 into V and voltage across R3 equals R3 upon R1 plus R2 plus R3 into V. Similar to voltage divider for parallel circuits, we use current divider rule to find the current flowing through the particular branch of the parallel network. It says that the current through any resistance is equal to the ratio of opposite resistance to the total resistance multiplied by the total current supplied by the voltage source. Consider a parallel circuit shown. The current through resistance R1 is equal to opposite resistance upon total resistance into total current equal to R2 upon R1 plus R2 into input current I. Similarly, I R2 is equal to R1 upon R1 plus R2 into input current I. So let's take an example to implement the series parallel circuit concept. Find the equivalent resistance between two points A and B. So let's see how to solve it. As we have to find the resistance between the two points, we keep these two points as it is and try to simplify the network around them into a single resistor. Now we can see the two resistors of 6 ohms and 2 ohms near point B form a series circuit. So we can replace them by their equivalent series resistor. Thus we get only one resistance of 8 ohms as shown. In a similar way, two resistors 4 ohms and 1 ohm near point A form a series structure. Thus, these also can be replaced by an equivalent series resistor of 5 ohms. Now, as we can see, the two 8 ohm resistors are connected in parallel. So, evaluating the equivalent resistor, we replace 2 ohms resistors by a single resistor of 4 ohms. Again, two 4 ohms resistors form a series structure. Thus, we replace them by the equivalent series resistance of 8 ohms. Thus, after simplifying the entire network, we can now see that across two points, A and B, we have two resistors only connected in parallel. So, Finding their equivalent resistance gives the required answer. Thus, the resistance between points A and B is 3.07 ohms. We have already seen what is meant by a voltage source. The ideal voltage source supplies constant voltage irrespective of the change in the load current. Thus, the ideal voltage source of 5 volts will supply 5 volts of potential only. Even if the load current changes to 1 ampere, 100 ampere or 1 milliampere, the resistance of the ideal voltage source is 0 ohms. But we never get 100% ideal voltage source. Small resistance is always present for every source. Hence, smaller the resistance, more ideal is the voltage source. Similar is the ideal current source. Current supplied by the ideal current source must remain constant irrespective of the load resistance or the voltage applied. That is, ideal current source of 5 amperes always gives current of 5 amperes irrespective of voltage source or the resistor. Internal resistance of the ideal current source is infinite. But practically, we get a large resistance instead of infinite resistance. Thus, higher the internal resistance, more ideal is the current source. The source transformation means transforming a voltage source into its equivalent current source and vice versa. Hey, it's time to concentrate now. Using source transformation, the voltage source connected in series with the resistance can be replaced by an equivalent current source connected in parallel with the same resistance using Ohm's law 
as I equals V upon R. Similar to the above transformation, a current source connected in parallel to a resistor can be replaced by an equivalent voltage source connected in series with that resistor using Ohm's law V equals I into R. The series rule of addition applies to the voltage sources also. We can replace two voltage sources connected in series by their equivalent voltage source obtained by the algebraic addition of their magnitudes. The two voltage sources when connected as negative terminal of first source connected to a positive terminal of the second source, we simply add their magnitude. Thus, we can replace 3 volts and 5 volts series sources by 8 volts source. But when positive of one battery is connected to positive of the second, we subtract their magnitudes and assign the sign of a larger magnitude. Thus, 9 volts and 3 volt sources will be replaced by minus 6 volts source as shown. Similar to voltage source transformation, two current sources connected in parallel can be replaced by a single current source obtained by the algebraic addition of magnitudes of two sources. If the current from both the sources flow in the same direction, then we simply add them. Thus, we get an equivalent of 8 amperes for two current sources of 3 amperes and 5 amperes. But if the directions are opposite, we subtract the magnitudes and assign the direction of the larger magnitude current to the equivalent source as shown. Let's implement these concepts by taking an example. Using source transformations, find the current through 4 ohms resistor. As we need to find the current through a 4 ohm resistor, we do not touch the right side of the network and start applying the source transformations from the left side. Applying current to voltage source transformation to the current source of 5 amperes, we get the equivalent voltage source of 5 volts connected in series with 5 ohms resistor as shown. Now we get the two voltage sources of 25 volts and 10 volts connected in series. Applying a series rule of addition, we replace them by the equivalent source of 15 volts in series with 5 ohms resistance. Again, applying the source transformation to the voltage source of 15 volts, we replace it by a current source of 3 amperes connected in parallel to 5 ohms resistance. Now, we have two current sources connected in parallel, so replacing them by equivalent current source of 6 amperes in direction same as 9 amperes, we get the structure as shown. Now, we can apply our current divider rule to find the current through 4 ohms resistance. Thus, I equals opposite resistance 5 ohms upon total resistance of 5 ohms plus 4 ohms into total current of 6 amperes, giving the answer as 3.33 amperes flowing from the bottom to the top as shown. Let's see what we've learned in this chapter. There are two types of DC circuits, series circuit and parallel circuit. In series circuit, all components are connected back to back and the series equivalent is obtained as RS equals R1 plus R2 plus R3. In parallel circuit, the components are connected across the two common points only. Parallel equivalent resistance is calculated as RP equals R1 into R2 upon R1 plus R2. Next concepts are voltage and current divider rules. According to voltage divider rule, voltage drop across resistor 1, that is V1 equals that resistance upon sum of all resistors in series into total voltage V. According to current divider rule, the current flowing through branch 1 equals through branch 1 or I1 equal to opposite resistance upon 
sum of the two resistances into total current I. The source transformation is used to simplify the networks. The different cases are voltage source in series with resistance is transformed into a current source in parallel with that resistance and vice versa. Two voltage sources connected in series can be replaced by the equivalent source equal to algebraic sum of the two sources. Two current sources connected in parallel can also be replaced by one source obtained from the algebraic sum of the two sources.